Welcome to Let's Be Real 100%, where we are 100% real about life. We know that life happens and we are here to talk about it. And when I say we, I'm talking about it's all God and little old me. Join us as we jump into our topic today. Good morning, good afternoon, welcome back to another episode of Let's Be Real 100%. We have a wonderful interview on today with my wonderful co-host, Simone, and also our guest is named Cindy Wagler. I hope that you enjoyed this episode, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Let's be real. Uh, I wanted to start off, I usually start off with a, um, a icebreaker, just okay. to ice a little bit. Of course, that works for me. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I usually be organized, more organized than this, but oh, that's okay. That I have days like that too. Actually, it's been happening a lot too recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those things where the internet want to act crazy, and then everything else is just what the. Let me go to my phone, unfortunately. All right. All right. So, what animal best represents you today and why? Oh, that one's a hard one. <laughs> um. Okay, I'll just do this one then. How about that? Okay, uh, sorry. I'm like, I don't even know. Fine, cause that was, yeah, that was kind of hard. That was like, I wouldn't even know what animal I am today either. Uh, <laughs> that one's hard. <laughs> if you could have one superpower today, what would it be and what would you use it for? Um, I would turn the world nice again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a good one. <laughs> it would be nice. I don't know. I just think ever since COVID happened and the world was shut down, Mm -hmm. it was, I don't know. It just, um, relationships broke. Yes. A lot of relationships, like the family relationships, Mm -hmm. you know, relationships with your spouses, your kids, everything, just your friends. Yeah. A lot of, yeah, a lot of things did change even when, in even in our own persons, a lot of things changed about ourselves as well. Cause we feel like we kind of lost. Yeah, them. Everybody kind of felt like abandoned and alone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Definitely wasn't a good feeling for a lot of us. Exactly. Um, like, you know, back, back in the day, like before COVID happened, mm-hmm. you could walk down the sidewalk. I don't know. I'm a small town girl. I grew up in the country <laughs> and you could, <laughs> walk down the sidewalk and people would say hi and you know be nice to you and but nowadays when people walk down sidewalk they don't say hi no more there's no you know like everything's different community is gone yeah yeah that's yeah that definitely happened to us um i also want to introduce you to my co-host she thinks she's gonna be up here and be quiet um my co-host name is miss simone Hello, how you doing? Good, how are you? All right. All right, so you did, um, you told me a little bit about yourself um, on the messages. Um, I also know that you said you were a a coach. Could you tell me about that? So when I was younger, everybody, you know, I was in high school and my dad and I had that conversation, like, what what are you going to do when you're done school or what do you want to do kind of deal? And Mm-hmm. I said to him, I want to change the world. And it's not like, not like a, how supermodels say it. It's like literally wanted to change the world. Like things just seem so sad. <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. know. Like I, I find as you grow up, like you're, you've got more stress on you and I don't know. I just... Everything changed in my life anyways. Okay, so you wanted to be a coach because of the things that happened to you personally? Yeah, like, so many people have mental illness, and Mm -hmm. I was one of those people. I ended up in a a really, like, really bad depression, like, two years ago, 
and I'm not one to go to the doctor and, and, you know, get put on a prescription to help, you know, like, yeah, I have to deal with, like, I have to work through my problems and not a lot of people do that. And I was really in a, I was one of those people that could get myself out of the depressions, whether it was talking to somebody and, right. and then it, like cluing in and, but um, it took me a very long time. Like I shut down completely. And it was just like one day I woke up and I was just like, whoa, like I was like, you know, people journaling, it does work. And I don't know, just going for walks that does help and clear your mind. It's just, you have to work. You have to work through your on problems. Nat- Everybody's different. Yeah. It's easier to work on it when you, in a natural way to, like you said, where you're talking, walking or, um, cause you know, <laughs> medications, sometimes they can add on other stuff to add on. Well, to me, as well. Yeah, exactly. Like it can make it worse. I don't know. Maybe it can make it better. I don't know. Like, but that problem is always going to be there. Exactly. You're exactly. always going to end up, whether it's a year from now or a month from then or a year from now, like you're always going to end up, you need to work through whatever it is that had happened. Right. And yeah. it's, when nobody on, does that anymore. Yeah. Like I feel like even if you're on the medication, because I was on the um, antidepressant and every time I looked at the pill, it always reminded me you know, why I'm taking the pill. So it would take me back. So um, I did, like you said, I did start writing. Um, I didn't do the walking thing, but that would be nice. But um, I started writing and I started talking to people and I started, you know, seeing myself come out because when I feel like if I I write it out, it can come off my mind. If I talk it out, I can get it off my chest and not worry about it. Um, so it won't be, you know, lingering over me like that. So I definitely can relate to that. Yeah. And when you talk to like, whether it's your best friend or whatever, and you're talking, it's to me, I was, it always seemed like you're talking about the same thing. It it always ended up back to the same thing. And you could tell like maybe that they were just sick of hearing about it. Right. So that's why I'm like, okay, you know what? I got to deal with this situation on your own because you know, somehow. (laughs) Well, you got to talking about it helps, but actually doing something about it. Yeah. It's even better. So it's that's true. That yeah. is true. Well, with me dealing with mental health, um created a number of coping skills. Um medication, um holistic skills, having an emotional support animal, um, just finding out what works for me. Um my spirituality, keep going to church, um, music therapy. Uh, taking my medication like I'm supposed to. Medical adherence is definitely um, good with mental health medications and finding out and researching the medications. You know, doctors put you on, everybody wants to put you on the same thing, you know, just a, and it may not work for you. So you have to find, it does, uh, and you have to put in the work. It does take a lot of work to find that um, groove that medication that may work for you. You have to be honest. The one in dealing with mental health, if you're not ready to deal with um, those issues, and then a doctor putting you on medications and you're not honest, then you're going to have those highs and lows and wonder why you're going through whatever you're feeling. It's because you need to be transparent in like what you're dealing with, what are your traumas, what are your triggers, boundaries. And that way they can give you the right medication and medication has to work. You have to take it. It's not just like a pill you put in your mouth and it's okay. It has to, yeah. be, it has to become acclimated to taking it every day. Um, you have to take it. And one thing about mental health I see is people take it. And then once they start feeling better, they stop taking the medicine. And that's the biggest no, no when you're on medication, cause you can crash out so bad. Exactly. And then end up getting, going to the doctor and getting it prescribed more. Like not right. saying like going to the doctor and getting like, um, getting on meds is, is a bad thing. Like it's not, but like you said, when you, when you do, when you are on the meds, that's step one. Now you have to work through what it is that's bringing you down. Right. Mm-hmm. 
type yeah. of thing. And not a lot of people do that. Right. And it's difficult. We have it's, to get the stigma of going to therapy. If I go to therapy, I'm crazy. And that's, we have to change the narrative of, of that. Um, if you go to a therapist, you can't talk to, sometimes you may not be able to talk to a friend or um, a relative or somebody, you just want to hear somebody, uh, a listening ear and somebody coming from a non-judgmental point of view. Um, therapy is not a bad thing. No, it's not. Not therapy and counseling, life coaching, it's it's all good, but right. you've got to find the right one for right. you, right? Mm-hmm. And um Courage too, also, if they meet a person like, well, she wasn't listening. You know, I don't right. want to go back. No, it's just like with food, anything else in life, you have to keep going till you find the right person that's that you're going to mesh with. Exactly. Exactly. You know, like I did counseling when I was younger. Like I lost my mom when I was five to cancer. She had melanoma cancer. And um, my dad remarried. And like my family, I had an amazing family, but it just felt like part of me wasn't there. I never dealt with, I didn't know I was five, but I never knew how to express how I felt. I did go to counseling, but I, and I did one-on-one counseling, but it wasn't, they, the counselor would also tell my parents or my dad and my stepmom what I'd say, like what was bothering me, but they didn't, say it in the right way because it led to my stepmom and me not having the greatest relationship when I was right. a teenager mm-hmm. type of thing. Right. Yeah. Communication goes a long way in the right way. Yeah. So like when they say, okay, like this is, you know, like I'm here to help you. And this is, this is what, you know, you say, you tell your their loved ones, like the counselor is supposed to tell your loved ones if you're suicidal or if you're like if that's what you're thinking of and stuff like that, right? Not this is what her and I did or discussed this session and yeah. because it it it's like tele, you know what I mean? Like you sit there and then it's the wrong way it was put. Yeah, you know what I mean. What I yeah. said, yeah. So when I came home from school that one day and my stepmom was downstairs and she worked from home, like towards, like when I was in grade seven and eight and she, I said, hi, how are you? And like, she was like completely like that. It was not a good, it was not a good conversation. I'll tell you that (laughs) because what I told that counselor, she ended up changing it. You know what I mean? And I, and when you're trying to explain, no, that's not what I meant. They don't want to sit there and listen. Right, you know what I mean, because they think that you're lying to them. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's as a young person, they think that you're not telling the truth. So. Yeah. After and so after that, I just lost all like. Nope, I'm not doing any like all faith in people. Like I'm trying to make my life better, not make it worse, and it made right. my made things not good at home. <laughs> <laughs> right. So as you got older, after dealing with um, all those things. Um, how did you how did you find your way out of all of that like when you overcome all of that what did you find yourself so when I was younger and I was in school um I was teased and picked on a lot and I never went home and I never told my parents and I never told my siblings or anybody because you know like I just figured why why I say something so I just dealt with it mm-hmm. so over the years all that builds up and then you just, like, I was there for my family and friends if they needed anything. Like, I was there to help support, help whatever I could. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you you keep, you know, your siblings come to you and you keep those secrets. And, like, don't tell mom and dad this. But if I was to do something, somehow somebody would find out. Right. Like, my parents would find out somehow. And I'm like, how did you, like, how? Like, I told one person and, you know what I mean? So that's why I lost, I lost all that's what kind of made me want to do that, like do what I am doing now. But mm-hmm. I didn't want to go to college and, you know, diversity for it because I, to me, help, helping somebody, you have to like actually want to be there and help them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm a hands-on person. So, but at the time or just recently, like I kept 
after COVID, that's when you kept hearing about all these like life coaches. I'm like, what's right. a life coach? Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, that's exactly what I've always wanted to do <laughs> because that's- it's more of a hands-on. It is. Let's go out and let's work on things. Yes. yes. And so what I do, and it's, if I was to have clients that are in like, say the States or say, you know, like far, far away, I will do, I would do like over the laptop, like I would do the virtual mm-hmm. counseling. Mm-hmm. But if there's some people like near me, like if it's locally and nearby and whatever, I will drive, I would drive to you to where you feel comfortable right? and be able to talk like not office or anything set up at, like I have like a desk and everything at home but right. I don't have my like away from home office and right. I feel when you go to an office like you're in, you're in a whole different room and you don't feel comfortable do you know what I mean right exactly. where I would drive to you and to where you feel safe like your safe spot yes. for you to mm-hmm. let it all out and Right. be able to work on what it is that's holding you back and being down. And I have a safe space. Yeah, it's your safe space. Whether you, whether it's not like, what if, if you don't want to give that safe space away, like, the other spot, like, and do another spot where you feel comfortable. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, it's, I want you to feel comfortable and have, Put trust in me right. for you to get that spot in you. Yeah, because you do have to, like, when you're talking to people, you do have to um, that trust with them because, um, and then you also have to relate with them in some way, shape, or form so that you're, it's a, it's a natural help. It's not out of the books. It's not out of the 12-step program. It's not out of all that stuff. But if you can relate to them in a way then it's easier for them to connect with you um, and being able to be comfortable and open up to you as well. Exactly. And, you know, everybody goes through their own experiences, their own traumatic experiences. So nobody's the exact same. Right. But like you said, like you can relate. So it's, I don't know. I want, I want feel to, I want people to feel more confident and believe in themselves by that that makes you happy and by being happy that makes you know you can walk down the sidewalk and say hi to people that day you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. so that's definitely a good place to be and just reading up on your story I can definitely tell that you can um, relate with a lot of people who are going through um, mentally mental emotional and physical um issues uh, a lot of people don't know how to actually really deal with those <laughs> issues so you're definitely helping a lot of people by um, relating with them uh, also how did you um i guess i would say how did you come up with your name on your business the healing and forgiveness trauma life coach like um well i was talking to um another life coach and one day she like I was just I was just put a as in the beginning I just put a trauma life coach because I didn't know how like I didn't I want to help everyone like it's so hard to when they say you need to you know decide who it is that you want to help well you know like I want to help kids because there's so many kids these days kids are mean (laughs) like you know so many kids are picked on but right. then I got thinking, I'm like, you know what? You're in high school. There's so many teenagers that are picked on. It is. Or, you know what I mean? And and adults at work. Like, I used to work in a nursing home. And, you know, like, you, you hear things. And you're like, hey, like, we're grown adults. Like, why can't we just all get along? Like, I'm not saying I'm perfect. Like, everybody right. judges. And I get it. But it, it's to a certain point. Like, it now, like, it just realized, like, you know what, like, why can't we just all get along? <laughs> I right. don't know. It's just, yeah. I don't know. Like, like thinking back to my parents right. and them having a group growing up of friends and, and still to this day, they have that same group. Wow. And then I never, like I had friends, but like <laughs> I have friends, but I don't, 
it just seems like these days everybody likes to backstab everybody. So if one person's like actually going somewhere in life, mm-hmm. you think that your friends are there for you, but then not, but they're not. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Mm-hmm. And you they think- bring you down, and then then right. you're back to like the beginning again. So right, yeah, I could definitely relate to that because like when you're down and out, you know, and you need. You would think that those same people are there, but they're only there when everything is all hyped and you're giving out everything. Um, you, as long as they, I guess they can benefit from you, is when they stay around. But when they, it, when that time comes, when they can't benefit from you, they not there for you as they, as they say they should be. Um, but yeah, it's definitely hard to keep those, those kind of friends they had back in the day. Because back in the day, I don't think they really just had, you know, that many. I mean, they had their issues, but they dealt with things differently from then than they do now. Um, I feel like bully people, people that bully are being bullied um, in way, one way, shape or another, either at home or, you know, at school or whatever. Um, and they take that, that same energy and they use it on other people, if that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Because they feel down. So let, let's make other people feel down as well. Right. Right. Right, exactly. So it's good um, that you do help uh, kids and teens and adults who, you know, go through trauma events um, and that you help families who uh, make their relationships better. Mm -hmm. Um, It's kind of hard to find those kind of those kind of counselors and that kind of, you know, support group out there. Um, Because everybody, like you said, everybody's dealing with their own issues. They don't know how to help other people exactly and you know like when you're in high school you you're you're already you already feel lost like you know like now with I don't know it's just what they're learning in school is totally different and I'm only like I'm in my 30s so it's totally different than what I learned in school which is which we learned in school which is totally different from what our parents learned in school do you know what I mean right Mm -hmm. for some reason um, there's one thing that I learned in school and that my parents learned in school is respect. And that is not brought up in school anymore. It's not. Um, oh, well, that's big. Well. Like, I don't know. There's just. Internet. Yeah, they learn a lot. The internet teaches you how to be a bully, a silent bully. The internet teaches you. I mean, yeah, we come from an era of respect. Our parents, we it starts at home first. Yeah, exactly. It does, and I don't know. Like in, there's so many families who deal with conflicts as well, but they're like, you got to be there for each other and not turn your backs. I don't know. I was that's how I was brought up. I was brought up in a Christian home. We went to church mm-hmm. every Sunday and everything, but it's like you said, it's being like doing things at home with your parents and not a lot of parents these days, like my generation parents do that with their kids. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe, maybe it's, that's how they were raised. I don't know, but I, I'm still like, I'm one of those people that want to deal with whatever problem that is going on in the family. Like, you know, like I said, I'm I'm not perfect. I've done things in my life too, but I'm trying to reach out for help to my family who have turned their backs and, you know what I mean? Right. Like things seem to go good one minute or one day and then all of a sudden it, it changes back to, you're back to square one. We lost physical connection when we took away landlines. Once they it's- had cell phones it was easier for people to create distance. Exactly. Um, so I agree there, with you on that. <laughs> there's no, I mean, you know, at when we had landlines, people were together more. I don't know why, but, it, you know, people had landlines. You you had to pick up the phone, but then you're like, well, never mind, I'm just going to go over there. Now we created cell phones. Everything and social is media. through a text <laughs> message or social media. So there's no physical there's we have no physical contact with people anymore so therefore now when you get in a group of people it's hostility nobody energy speak you know when you be in the room or whatever you can feel people's vibes or energies or emotions you know how to adjust but because we just come into that one sentiment at that one time 
everybody's hostile because they got their guard up. Exactly. So it creates a negative environment where, oh, how did you mean? Oh, on the phone, on the internet. What happened to biblical connections? And yes, COVID came, and yes, we had to lock ourselves in the house and do those things. But once we got back out, it still wasn't no physical connection. Mm -hmm. It was just back into the same thing of concerts and picking up back on negative things. Not like, what did you learn from being locked in the house? Did you come together? Did you work anything? Nobody talked about, nobody talked about the trauma of COVID. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like, we're oh, you're, we're back inside, and everybody just went back into their normal routine, but nobody talked about the trauma. Like nobody talked about trauma back in, you know, when you were little. Nobody talked about the trauma. What did it do to you? Like, did it deaden something? Did it arise something in you? Nobody talked about that. What happened when you was locked in the house for those months? What went through your head? Nobody asked, were you really okay? What happened? Nope, everybody just came outside and act like it it happened, but it didn't happen. Oh, put on a mask, wash your hands, and let's continue to do what we've been normally doing. Right. Exactly. That's exactly right. So when I worked in the, so during COVID, at the beginning of COVID, I worked in, in the nursing home. And what really hurt me the most, because you lose residents. And when I found that a lot of residents had passed away. There was a, there was a difference because mm. nobody was coming to see them. Do you right. know what I mean? It, like they gave up. Some gave up. Some were like, you know, like they were really sick too, but they, they just gave up. And what really hurt me the most is that families wanted to be there as their loved ones were taking their last breath or whatever, mm -hmm. but weren't allowed. Okay. So you have the nurse there and you have maybe a PSW there, you know, like holding their hand, you know, and then that's it. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like they saw their loved one die through a, a window or they got the phone call at nighttime. Hey. Like, it's just, it's, it's sad. Not the, not the same. Cause I don't it's, know PSW. I don't know this. nurse. Right, I don't I know some, these people. Right. I want my loved one there. Yeah. I want my, I want somebody who knows me there. Right. When I take my last breath, somebody that's not going to, remember my legacy this you come to work every day that's how you know me but you don't know me like how my family knows me right right so that was the trauma that people needed to talk about how they feel to be seeing your loved one pass away or hearing that phone call right it was just like oh you know people are still devastated and oh exactly and even the funerals so my grandma passed away during this, the, during the COVID time and my daughters loved my, my grandmother. Like my grandmother was like, she loved her babies. Like she loved her grandbabies, but when her, the great grandbabies came, like they were, so there's my brother and I have all girls and then my stepsister has a, a little boy, but she called like her dollies. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so, and my cousin had, like, my cousins have daughters as well. Like, they were her dollies and everything. But my oldest was pretty close with my grandmother. And she couldn't, that really hurt her, I think. When um, my grandmother passed away and she couldn't come to the funeral. Because there was only allowed to be 10 of us. Right. right, right. And, that, and then I get thinking, like, my grandmother knew a lot of people. And right. there was a huge difference from when my grandfather passed away mm -hmm. at the cemetery. There was a lot of people there and a lot of people at the, at the funeral mm -hmm. to 10 of us at the cemetery saying our goodbye. And it wasn't the same. Like it wasn't, it just, they like, you know, she got lowered into the ground and, and that was it. Right. Like, right. I'm like, what? Like, this is, this is not it. Like, this yeah. is, this is not right. So that really, that upset me too. Yeah, that makes sense. It did. Um, yeah, COVID put a lot of um, trauma on a lot of people, as far as you know, life and life and death um, of family members and loved ones. So, yeah, but um, we definitely come. Oh, we come through it, and we try to be there. We trying to now. I say for me, 
um, try to be there for um, people now because we know that time is short and we know that, you know, life is but a vapor, you know. Exactly. Um, it can be here now and gone tomorrow. So, exactly. That's uh, what I, I say the same thing, especially, you know, like my parents are getting older and with right. my situation, I, I keep asking my dad, I'm like, hey, like, can we not like work together through this? Because, you know, like either I could be gone or, or you could be gone and I never got to fix things. Things right. it just that would leave and there are people like that. Right. You know, like they have disagreements with family members or friends. And right. when that person passes, then like I don't know, I would I myself would feel like there's a hole that's not filled that should have been. Do you know what I mean? I'm the, I'm like the type of person I, I want to bring like that forgiveness back. You know what I mean? Like I want to help people be yeah. true to each other and be families again. And I don't know. It's hard. <laughs> it, is, it is hard because you're dealing with personality um, with, when you're dealing with certain families and certain families, they have, Gen, uh, generational issues um, that you know they have as well, and it it lingers on into the the next generation and the next. So, um, and then of course you know again COVID kept put a whole nother spin on things. Yeah, but you didn't even see your family with COVID. Right. You can it right. was hard. But you can go to work. So like for us for PSWs, this also bugged me, is mm-hmm. because there was a lady at the nursing home and she was like all confused because her daughter came in same time every day, her daughters or family, like, you know, there would be a family member there either around the same time or whatever, the same time every day. And it stopped. And then you have them wandering around saying, what did I do? Right. But yet they see like, they're not all like, even though you have dementia or you're not, you know, you don't remember the person that helped you the next day, right. who helped you the day before. Mm-hmm. Like, it's different people. So we could go in and out and right. go home to our families, but they're, you know what I mean? They could. Right. Whether, well, I don't know. It just, it really upset me. It did, but I believe you're going to be one of those ones that can make that change and bring it back all together. You seem so much, you seem passionate about bringing it all well, yes, because it also not only for nursing home for uh, for nursing homes and for the elderly, right? But people who have separated mm-hmm. and who have kids together, right? Like to me, that you know, like you'd hear stories like you can't have your kids this weekend because of COVID, right? Well, and then you know that relationship with your your children, mm-hmm. it it it's not a relationship because because of you know what the other person's saying about yeah. that you know that parent or you know what i mean right that kind of happened in my situation like i'm i've got three daughters and i i'm having a it's hard it's just it's hard to make things what they used to be right 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 but you can't take back what you said already because it's already downloaded in that person's <laughs> folder in their exactly. mind you know what you said it, even if it's another parent you know and then their your child is going through that motion because they really can't talk to you or see you you know and see your side of everything um because you're limited so i definitely um i definitely can relate to that part yeah and it, well, then that's where depression comes in yes you know what i mean because you lose you lose everything. You feel like you lost everything. Yeah, you lose that. Like uh, Simone said, you lose that connection um, yeah. with people. Because some bonds are, they say they're easy, they're not easily broken, but let 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 a certain issue come up. You know, you'll, you'll see how strong your, your bond is um, to family. So again, like I say, um, the thing that you're doing, the projects that you have and the job that you have, I believe it's one of those that will truly bring back. Um, we just have to bring back the 
you know, life coaching, peer specialist, mental health, whatever, those are, we have to keep the original things that we've been taught because now we live in such a super sensitive society. Super sensitive, for sure. But Yeah. And if you're helping somebody that, you know, maybe that your client can say something that would help you fix whatever's going wrong in your life. It's heads helping each other out. It's yeah. Exactly. Yes, yeah, I had a therapist that related with me on all levels and I was like, yes. <laughs> and then uh, he was, I was able to help him as well through my, you know, my venting into my stories because he would, he would literally just let me sit there and vent the whole time. And I would end up answering my own questions sometimes. And yeah, know, no, it comes to you that, and that's what it's nice to having that person sit there and right. even though if, if that person figured out like what you should do, right, that's when it clues into you. When you're talking about, it, you're like, oh my gosh, I can, right. you know, and you're like, exactly, you like just, yeah, that light bulb finally, that fight, that light bulb finally come on, yeah. But that's there was, that helped me a lot. Yeah, I've always okay. So this is kind of funny. I've always when I was in high school, I definitely I I I loved watching like the like home improvement and seventh heaven and all those like fun comedian shows and all that. And I said, you know what? Like I want to be a movie director and, and that's what I'm going to do because I want to help in a way it's that you can help people because those shows helped you in a way. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, they get made it. This probably, I don't know if this makes sense, but like some of the shows just kind of dong on you. Like you're an, they're doing this so if maybe right. if i tried it it, it would right. work kind of deal right yeah exactly exactly and that's what i was um like the interview i had when i say she helped me like a lot because she was like you know she was talking about her facing her fears and you know different things that she was dealing with and you know she took it step by step she didn't take it from uh zero to ten all at that one moment you know you take you know, step by step, and you you know you congratulate yourself by taking that first step, that second step, you know, and it's like that's what we have to do sometimes, even when we're going through our own, yeah, you know, issues. Exactly. There's yeah. no time limit to it. There isn't. Right. Um, it's and, not. <clears throat> but like, like there is, but there's not. Do you know what I mean? Right. I get one of those people who want to actually get those problems dealt with and want to get your side out mm -hmm. and be able to, you know, work on things with family members or friends or your spouse or, you know what I mean? Right. Then working, I don't even know where I was going with that. <laughs> and really, <laughs> <laughs> by working by, so while my, my program, I know it, it can help people and, I'm one of those people that want to see you succeed in life. Do you know what I mean? Because that's what makes me feel good is knowing that I helped you. Right. Right. That's the type of person I am. Yeah. That, and it does make you feel good. It makes you um, know that that person is going to be okay because you, you were able to, you know, help them as well. Yeah. Even though that's, you know, like, I don't know. We all have rules in our countries and all that and everything's different. Right. But to me, I think, you know, like, why, why do you need somebody else to run you? Like, you know what I mean? Everybody's got to express how they feel. And it feels like these days you can't, mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter. And it does matter. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. You're feeling That's good. Your feelings and your emotions does matter because you know that's you know that's just, that's who you are. That's how you feel, and to express it, whether it's you know good, bad, or ugly, to get the help that you need, it's always good. But again, like she said, you have to find that right one that you can you can really relate with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's, um, any last words you would like anybody to know? Um, and then how, so how they can find you, um, um, right now, um, I have a Facebook group called overcome the impossible. Okay. And so what I, I watch a lot of those motivation videos on YouTube and, mm -hmm. um, I like a lot of those quotes and it helps me 
to help others and it helps me to get through my day as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So for those who don't think it's impossible to get through what it is that's bothering you, it is. And if you want support, because there are people out there that don't have that support, I'm, I want to be able to help you succeed in life and, you know, for you to get your story out. And if you need to, whether it's writing a letter to somebody who had passed away or, you know, mm-hmm. it's the same story or, cause a lot of people, when they lose a loved one or whatever, they don't know how to say goodbye right. or, you know what I mean? Like I have a program, I have done a program that works for you. And mm-hmm. so, and when our time has come and you feel good that you know you feel like you can move on in life Mm -hmm. I have I will have a a book that's meant for you Mm -hmm. so you can look back if there's going to be those days where you feel down depressed you miss that somebody you you know what I mean or how did I get through I feel like I'm going through again you have that book there that you can look back that you can you know you say I overcame it once I can do it again exactly and you can and I what I also do is I sit with you and we go through what it is that's holding you back and we work step by step on how you can overcome that situation and we set goals and we you know I mean like so I hope you click on my my page on Facebook and my website is almost complete. So that will be posted within the next couple of days okay. as well as I have an account on Lincoln as well that you can look me up. Okay. So if and you. My name is the one that's on Facebook, right? Yes. Um, okay. But it, my, my group is called overcome the impossible. Overcome the impossible. Overcome yeah. the impossible. Mm-hmm. And you can message me. I also have an email as well. It's Cindy O C T I five two nine at gmail.com. And the numbers represent on the email are my daughter's ages. So it's it. I just, I wanted a piece. I just, I did that to show them like huh, I'm doing this to, for them as well to show like, them. Right. Right. Whatever challenge in life, like I'm always there for them. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's always good. You, they have that support group, um, that support person they can go to as well. Because, you know, again, some parents you can't, um, sometimes you can't talk to them, but it's always good to be there, to be there for them, which is really good mm-hmm. how you that set up for your daughters. Exactly. And if you're, I don't know, I, I help all ages. So kids in school, kids who have been um, pulled away from their parents due to a situation and are put in the system and can't seem to forgive their parents. Like I'm there to help them. Right. And that's what I mean. Any tragic event or traumatic event, like I'm, and you want to feel better about yourself. I'm there. So. That's good. Uh, We definitely appreciate your services. um, uh, Because it's like I said, it's definitely well needed, especially in the time that we're in now, we definitely, um, need those kind of people so um thank you so much for coming uh to talk with us and uh hope that we'll be able to touch bases again uh with you as well thank you so much for having me oh, you're welcome and i hope you have a grand day awesome i hope you have the same as well <laughs> all right thank you bye have a good day you too bye Thank you for listening to Let's Be Real 100% when we're 100% real about life. We hope that you enjoyed the topic today and we hope that you trust God more and more each day and we hope to see you next week.